All right, YouTube, David Harry here. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to really easily put together your own USB-C storage drive. Now, in this particular instance, I'm gonna be testing it with my M1 Max MacBook Pro. However, at the end of the day, this is just going to be a USB-C storage device with an SSD in it, which means you can literally use this on anything. Could be a Windows PC, could be a Mac PC, desktops, laptops, all kinds of things. Anyway, what I will do now is just flip the camera over and let's get into this. So to build this USB-C SSD drive, we just need two components. The first one being the SSD. And in this instance, it's a two and a half inch SATA drive. And I'm going to be using a Samsung 860 Evo. Now this is just a 500 gig drive, but you could realistically use any type of two and a half inch SATA SSD that you want to. However, I would recommend looking at the Samsung 860 Evo range. They're very cost effective and they're also like, you know, a decent speed drive as well. Then what we need is an enclosure to put it in, which basically converts SATA to USB-C. And for this one, I'm going to be using this U-Green enclosure. And so what we're looking at now is the SSD here. This is the enclosure. And then also the enclosure comes with its own USB-C to USB-C cable as well. Now, all we have to do is put the SSD inside the enclosure, which couldn't be any easier. So just check this out. What it is, if we have a look here, that's the side that's actually got the USB-C socket on for the enclosure. So you literally just slide the lid off. So kind of push down a bit and push backwards. And then you'll just see it slide off like that. And then inside here, we will see there's a SATA connection, which is SATA power and the SATA data connector. So all we do is grab our SSD. We just make sure that the SATA connections here line up with the SATA connections inside the enclosure. And we literally just push the drive in until the two connectors meet up there like that, and then just push it in. Now that's all connected. Also as well, the inside of the enclosure has got some foam on either side here, which kind of grips the drive and keeps it nice and snug. Then all we do then is just slide the lid back on the enclosure. So we just put it over there like that, close it over, and it clicks into place. And then that literally is our drive all sorted. Now all we do is we just take one end of the USB-C cable there, pop it into the drive, and then pop the other end of the cable into the Mac. Now I will get on and do the formatting. Okay, so I've now plugged in this SSD into the Mac. However, we don't seem to be able to see an icon here for the drive that I've just plugged in. Now, this is not a problem. However, it's probably good to show you this because depending upon if you've used an existing SSD or it could even be a brand new one, once you put it together, your Mac may not show it either. And the reason for that is the SSD itself may just not be in the correct format for the Mac to see it. Now, regardless of whether you see see your drive or not, I would recommend you just do a fresh format and erase anyway. So what we're going to do here is go to Disk Utility. Now, if you know where Disk Utility is, you go straight there. However, if you don't know where it is, just click on the search icon up here and then just start typing in Disk Utility. So and then what will happen at some point, it will just pop up and say Disk Utility. So click on Disk Utility. Now, once we are in Disk Utility, it is very important that the first thing you do is go to View and make sure View is set to Show All Devices. Now, once it does that, we can now see the external SSD here. So what we need to do is to select the drive itself don't select the container or any of the volumes, select the root, which is the disk itself, and then come over to Arrays. So click on Arrays. 
Now what we want to do here is to use a format which will allow us to use the drive on other devices. So I would recommend using XFAT for this. It just means we can then use the disk on say a Windows system or something else that is like compatible with XFAT, which most things are. So what we want to do here is go to where it says scheme. So we'll click on scheme, select master boot record for that and then go to format here click into format and select xfat now at this point all we need to do is to give the drive some kind of a name so i'm just going to call this let's see 500 gigabyte ssd you call yours whatever you want something that makes sense for your setup and then what we do here is then tap on arrays then that'll only take like a few seconds and it's going to unmount, then remount and erase and format and all that stuff. And as we can see there, that's basically done. Okay, so let's click on done there. Now we can exit disk utility. And as we can see now on the desktop, we have got our new fresh drive. Now what I'm going to do is to just launch a disk speed utility here. And I'm going to use the black magic design one. So what I'm going to do is go up to here and go select target and then I will select the 500 gigabyte SSD. So we'll open that and let me just start this speed test now. So this will give us a good idea as to like, you know, the kind of speeds we're going to get off this particular drive. Now, as we can see straight away, just over 400 megabytes per second write speed, which is pretty awesome. Read speed is just over 380, close to 390. I'll let this go through two or three times just so we can kind of see what the averages are here. But that write speed is very good. That's 400 megabytes per second. Okay, so I'll stop that test there because I think we can see right now, we're definitely getting just over 400 megabytes per second for the write. And we are getting just under 390 for the read, which is pretty awesome. Now what I'm going to do is just set up for some real world write and read tests. So for the real world disk speeds, what I'm going to do is copy this folder onto the SSD and then I will copy it back out again. So what we're going to be doing there is testing the write speed and then the read speed. Now this particular folder here is, let's see, 58 gigabytes in size, just shy of 59, call it 58 gigabytes. So what I'm gonna do is time it as I put the folder over. So let me just drop this folder and then quickly hit start. Hold on, maybe I was about a second out there as I done that. So what we're doing right now is testing the write speed of the drive. So now what I'm going to do, I'm just gonna fast forward through this until we get to the end of this and let's see how long it's taken to do this. Okay, so what I've just done there is kind of maybe stop maybe a second after it finished. So that second that I lost at the beginning, I've kind of added it to the end. But regardless, we're probably talking, what, two minutes, 48 seconds to write 58 gigabytes, which I think is really good for this type of drive. So this is a SATA drive. I think that number is really good. So once again, two minutes, 48 seconds to write 58 gigabytes. So now what I'm going to do here, I'm just gonna delete the folder from the desktop there. Let me just reset the timer. Now what I'm gonna do is drag the folder back from the SSD onto the internal drive. So what we're gonna be doing now is measuring the read speed. So let me just get ready to drop and then start. Maybe I was about another second out there, something like that. Now, one thing worth mentioning here, this folder contains a bunch of video files in. So these are quite large files. And for me personally, this is typical of the type of thing that I would move around. SSDs, hard drives, any type of storage will slow down when you start using like, like tons and tons of like tiny random files, like really, really small files and stuff like that. However, that's not really a good way to test for the maximum speed of a drive. So to test for like, you know, your max speed, what I'm doing right now is probably the best way of doing it. And that is to test like fairly large continuous files and stuff. Anyway, what I'm gonna do right now is just speed through this and let's get to the end and see what this number's like.
Okay, so as far as the read speed is concerned, that was there about two minutes and 23 seconds. So again, that's great. It would appear there that in the real world testing that the read speed is as we would expect. It should be a bit faster and stuff. Anyways, as we can see there, this particular drive is no slouch and we are definitely getting really good, decent speeds here. Okay, so hopefully then this video has been of use to you. If so, please give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing to my channel, getting all over the bell notification icon in the pro process there will be links in the description below taking you to where you can grab the stuff that i've used in this video i'm david harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now